When it comes to superheroines, the first name that always comes to mind is Wonder Woman, and there's a reason for this. No other superheroine has ever come close to her in popularity or iconic status. So in today's video, we're going to take a quick look at Wonder Woman and 10 superheroines that came before her. Wonder Woman wasn't the first superheroine. Heck, she's not even the first superheroine in the DC Universe, but somehow she became the Queen Bee above all others. How did this happen, might you ask? Well, there's a big reason for this. And that reason is that Wonder Woman is probably one of the most complex superhero concepts ever created. Her complexity is a reflection of her creator, William Moulton Marston. Marston was a renowned psychologist and he did an interview in a 1940 issue of Family Circle. And in that article, he talked about the potential comics had in child development. All-American Comics publisher Max Gaines read this article and immediately sought Marston out. At this time, All-American Publishing was part of the DC Comics umbrella. For those of you who don't know, at this time, DC was made up of three different entities. There was National Periodicals, Detective Comics, and All-American Publishing and all three were made up of partnerships that included Harry Donenfeld and Jack Leibowitz. These three entities shared resources, including access to Marston, and likewise Marston had access to DC Comics, and he spent the next year looking over DC Comics, talking to editors and writers. Gaines asked Marston to invent a new superhero, and he decided that he wanted to create a hero who would use his brain and his heart in his adventures and not his fist. When he got home, he told his wife Elizabeth, and she told him to make the new hero a woman, and that's how Wonder Woman was born. When people tell of the creation of Wonder Woman, the focus is usually on Marston's unusual home life. He was married, but he lived a polyamorous lifestyle with a third woman, and in this three-way relationship, the trio explored the world of sexual fetishes, sadomasochism, and bondage. Of course, elements of these fetishes appear in Wonder Woman stories. The titillating nature of the BDSM aspect usually takes over the conversation at this point. What often gets left out of the conversation is that Marston was an intellectual, and he used his knowledge of psychology to hit psychological triggers that would make Wonder Woman appeal to little girls and little boys. In his personal beliefs, Marston believed that women would one day take over society, and they would do this through what he called love leaders. These would be nurturing, motherly women who would create a just and caring society and a world based on building and not destruction. And this is the concept he was going for with Wonder Woman. Love leader concepts appear throughout the mythos of Wonder Woman, the most prominent being the non-lethal golden lasso that forces those tied up by it into telling the truth. The shaming of being forced to tell the truth is a situation that young children can identify with, and in this scenario, Wonder Woman becomes a mother surrogate to the reader. The situation of taking command and forcing someone to tell the truth made her a great role model for little girls, and this situation is also tapping into the Oedipal complex in little boys. This is just one example of how complex the Wonder Woman concept is. At this point, I need to apologize because we've just barely skimmed the topic of psychological triggers in Wonder Woman, and we've just really barely skimmed over the, the creation of Wonder Woman. I really don't have time here to go into a deeper dive, but entire books have been written on the subject, and there's even a movie based on Marston's life and philosophy. Um, there's all sorts of articles and books written on the subject. So, by using psychological triggers, Wonder Woman is able to connect to audiences in a much greater way than other superheroines, and that's why she's an icon when other superheroines are basically a flavor of the month. And now, with that being said, let's take a look at 10 early superheroines that Wonder Woman left in the dust. And I'm hoping that I can expose you to a few characters you never even heard of before. As it turns out, Wonder Woman wasn't even the first Amazon in pop culture. In 1939, Fantastic Adventures featured the Tales of the Golden Amazon. 
Originally, her story was a sci-fi version of Tarzan. The golden Amazon is Violet Ray. Her parents are both scientists. They build a spaceship that crashes on the planet Venus, and Violet is the only survivor. On Venus, Venusian hotlanders teach her their ways. And as she grows up, the environment gives her superpowers such as superior intelligence and super strength. The environment also changes her skin and hair to the color gold. At times, the golden Amazon comes off as cold and merciless. She often strangles bad guys with her bare hands. With her first appearance in Fantastic Adventures, readers voted her the best of the issue, and this encouraged the editor to ask writer John Russell Fern for more adventures, and he cranked out three more stories using this storyline. In 1944, Fern reinvented the character, and this time she got her superpowers from a medical experiment. Although Fern was a British author, the Golden Amazon at first only appeared in American and Canadian pulp magazines. Eventually, she appeared in hardback form in his native Britain. Altogether, Fern wrote 27 Golden Amazon stories that were published between 1939 and 1961. Our next heroine is at Atlanta. This is a real old character. She goes all the way back to 1904. At Atlanta is the creation of German author Emil Robert Kraft. She first appeared in German Penny Dreadfuls for a 60 issue run starting in 1904. Later an 18 part story was published in 1912. Her story starts in the deep depths of the Amazon jungle. At Atlanta is a mysterious woman found on the shores of a place called Slave Lake. She suffers from amnesia, and she is a mystery with the exception that she is identified as being a member of the long-lost Mohawk tribe. She is described as very tall, very beautiful, and very mysterious. She has super strength and fighting skills. In her adventure, she takes on an evil professor and a group of big-headed genius albino dwarfs. Author Emil Robert Kraft began his writing career while serving in the German Navy. He was stationed at a naval base, and when German battleships came in, they would dump off their damaged books from their libraries. Kraft built up a personal collection with these damaged books, and that inspired him to take up writing. He is best remembered for detective fiction and his mass detective character, Detective Nobody. Fantima is generally thought of as the first comic book superheroine. She is the creation of troubled artist Fletcher Hanks. Many historians consider Hanks a creative genius, but according to his family, he was a monster. He was an abusive alcoholic and troublemaker who often attacked them with physical violence. And when you read his stories, his anger actually comes out onto the pages. Fantima is a jungle goddess and normally she appears as a beautiful woman, that is until some threat, usually from the outside world, enters the jungle, and then she turns into a demonic protector of the wild, sentencing evildoers to horrific and extreme punishments. Fantima made her first appearance in Jungle Comics number no. two, which is cover dated February 1940. In all of the Fantima adventures, Hanks uses the pen name Barclay Flag. In 1937, Olga Mesmer, the girl with the X-ray eyes, graced the pages of Spicy Mystery Stories. And even though Spicy Mystery Stories was a pulp magazine, her adventures were in comic form. Olga's mother is the exiled queen of an underground civilization. Her father is a mad scientist who exposed her mother to radiation. And this prenatal exposure gives Olga super strength in addition to her X-ray vision. In her early adventures, Olga goes to the underground kingdom and helps her mother regain her throne. She later goes to the planet Venus and helps defeat an evil dictator. Her creator is unknown, but historians have pinned her early artwork to artist Watt Del Lovett. Many of her later stories are signed with the name Stone, but no one has been able to identify him. Believe it or not, some of the original artwork from this series still exists. And oddly enough, all of the surviving pages has Olga wearing ripped clothing. 
credited as the oldest character in the DC universe is Siegel and Schuster's Dr. Occult. The good doctor goes all the way back to 1935. He made his first appearance in More Fun Comics number 6, but in that adventure, he wasn't alone. He had a female partner named Rose Psychic. Rose was an adventuress, and in that first Dr. Occult story, she saves Dr. Occult from the clutches of the evil Vampire Master. She appeared in the first four Dr. Occult stories and then disappeared for three years. She then mysteriously reappeared and remained in the Dr. Occult series until its original run ended. During the golden age of comics, Quality Comics produced more superheroes than any other line, and one of their earliest female characters was Wildfire. The story of Wildfire begins in a blazing forest fire. A mysterious fire spirit, calling himself Lord of the Fire, discovers a little girl wandering through the burning trees. Her parents have been killed by the fire, but she is not harmed or afraid of the fire. This little girl is Carol Vance. The Lord of the Fire is in awe of her raw innocence and grants her immunity from the flame. This gift from the fire spirit gives her superpowers, which allows her to command fire. She can shape fire into weapons such as a flaming axe, and she can also create a protective screen that melts bullets, and her command of fire also gives her the power of flight. After the fire that killed her parents, forest rangers discover Carol among the burned out trees. When the story of her survival hits the newspapers, an elderly couple who are without children adopts her. Carol keeps her powers a secret. She grows up into a beautiful young debutante. She lives the life of wealth and ease, and she even describes herself as a playgirl. In her adventures, she fights gangsters and saboteurs, and on the rare occasion, she faces off against costume supervillains such as the Fire Devil and the Frog. Wildfire only had a 12-issue run in Smash Comics. She is currently part of the DC Universe, but is seldom ever used. Another quality comic superheroine is the Phantom Lady. Sandra Knight is the daughter of a U.S. Senator. Armed with a blackout light that blinds her enemies, she takes on gangsters and saboteurs. She made her first appearance in Police Comics No. 1 and remained in that title for a two-year run. The Iger Art Studio produced the Phantom Lady stories for Quality Comics. They believed that they owned the character after Quality's cancellation, so they relaunched her for the Fox Features Syndicate. Fox wanted a super sexy superheroine. The Phantom Lady was redesigned to fit their desires. The job of reimagining the character was given to artist Matt Baker, and he drew her as one of the sexiest women to ever grace a comic page. The Fox Phantom Lady also contained sexual innuendos snuck into the dialogue, this and the cheesecake art did not go unnoticed by adults. She drew the attention of critics such as child psychiatrist Frederick Wortham. In his book Seduction of the Innocent, the Phantom Lady was one of his prime targets. Another major target of Frederick Wortham is the Black Cat. He took exception to the brutality that appeared in Black Cat comics. The Black Cat was an adventuress whose main skill was martial arts. In her comic book, there would be one or two pages dedicated to demonstrating martial arts or wrestling moves. These how-to pages taught and encouraged violence according to Wortham. The Golden Age Black Cat was produced by Harvey Comics. She made her first appearance in their very first publication, a digest-sized comic called Pocket Comics. The backdrop of the Black Cat is set in Hollywood. Her alter ego is Linda Turner. In addition to being an actress, she is also the daughter of a once famous silent film star. As a child, she grew up on film sets and she was tutored by stuntmen learning all sorts of skills including karate and riding a motorcycle. As an adult, she uses these skills to right wrongs and to protect the innocent. At her peak during the golden age of comics, the Black Cat rivaled Wonder Woman in popularity. Sadly, her popularity waned and she disappeared from the newsstands a few short years after World War II. Oh, 
Okay, another cat-themed costume superheroine who came out about six months before Wonder Woman was the newspaper strip Miss Fury. Miss Fury was the first costume superheroine to be created by a woman. Initially, artist-writer June Tarpe Mills dropped her first name June to hide the fact that she was a woman, but word quickly got out and newspapers outed her secret. Miss Fury is wealthy socialite Marla Drake. She is given a magical black bodysuit from her uncle after a trip to Africa. He claims he got the suit from a witch doctor. She puts on the bodysuit for the first time to attend a costume party. On her way to the party, she captures an escaped felon and her crime-fighting career begins. Initially, Miss Fury took on gangsters, Nazis, and saboteurs. But as the series continued, she took on social issues of the day, including such hot topics as single motherhood. At the height of her popularity, Miss Fury appeared in over a hundred newspapers. Collected reprints of the newspaper strips were reprinted by Timely Comics. Health reasons caused Mills to end the strip in 1952. Long before Laura Croft, there was the woman of bronze, Pat Savage. Beautiful, smart, and brave, Patricia Savage was perhaps the most successful pulp magazine heroine, even though she did not have a title of her own. As a guest character in Doc Savage, she appeared in 37 stories. Her first appearance was in 1934 in a story called Brand of the Werewolf. Patricia is the cousin of Doc Savage and has been trained in a similar manner as her older cousin. Armed with antique pistols, she's a crack shot. She is also an expert at boxing, fencing, and jiu-jitsu. She's a pilot and knows Morse code. She also speaks multiple languages, including Mayan. In addition to all that, another talent she has is that she can talk men into doing anything. Pat runs her operation out of a Manhattan beauty salon, and her adventures take her all over the world. Well, that's about it for these 10 characters and my voice. When I got started doing this video, um, I came up with a list of about 45 superheroines before Wonder Woman. And uh, maybe I'll do another video with some more of these characters. I tried to read up on all of them, but some of them are quite obscure. Anyway, that's all for me. I hope to see you again with a new video soon. And uh, please leave your comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a big thumbs up. Much appreciated. So until next time, stay super, everyone. Bye.